The information shared in this video is 100% public and can be accessed easily on Google and from news clips and other relevant documents. YouTube is a public platform and under the Fair Use Act, we are operating within the law. Our analysis, though highly substantiated by facts, is based on the analytic skills of the team behind this channel and is based on our opinions of the data presented to us. We are in no way, shape or form trying to sabotage the people being discussed in this video. This is solely meant to be used as a case study to analyze and give examples of incidents that ultimately lead to dire consequences. We are outsiders looking in and make no claim to knowing 100% of the intricacies of these individuals' lives and what they've been through. We simply use what is publicly available to bring awareness to young men and women across the Caribbean. Oti. Oti. Bang, bang. Yo, G6. <laughs> you know we like for the name you know. <laughs> well, 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 ça qui a fait ça a fait when nous pas ça je sais ça mais la nuit ça pour qui quoi yo c'est comme ça mais c'est pour ça la mort même pour ça pour ça yo quoi yo est pour yo qu'a fumé grandja well bête tête ça qu'a fait la compa la fumé saute ça comme on va pas chez quand quand ou qu'a brisé baka puis les batailles chaud ou qu'a brisé force là to many, this may be another one of Messi's hit songs, but to those who dwell in the underworld of St. Lucia and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, multiple dangerous criminals can be seen throughout this music video. But more on that later. On August 6, 2023, a St. Lucian celebrity who had achieved regional fame was buried. It marked the sad end of a once famous group named Grata going from starring as a Denary segment artist to finding a permanent home at the T. Rocher Cemetery, what led Messi down this dangerous path? Welcome to another episode of The Island's True Crime, where we uncover the skeletons hidden beneath the sand. What went wrong? Saturday, July 8th, officers from the Babano Police Station responded to a report of a body discovered at the Babano playing field. The Babano Fire Service personnel made the initial discovery. Upon arrival, the officers found a male victim with apparent gunshot wounds. Officers at the Babano Fire Station responded to an alleged shooting incident on Saturday, July 8th at approximately 11.40 p.m. Deceased has been identified as Terrell Laurent, better known as Messi, a 28-year-old resident of Hill 20, Babono. A medical practitioner pronounced Laurent dead on the scene. Investigations into this incident are currently underway. Terrell Laurent, better known as Messi, was born on January 6, 1995, and was raised in the community of Hill 20, Babano in Castries. As a child, he had a passion for two things, music and bikes. He could always be found freestyling for friends and learning how to do tricks on his bicycle as a child. These two hobbies would turn out to be very important to his future and would shape his life. In 2007, as every Caribbean child does, Messi sat the common entrance examination where his grades allowed him to attend the Bocage Secondary School. It was at this point in his life that he would meet another important figure in his life, Shaquille Auguste, also known as Smiley. Messi and Smiley became the best of friends, and this can be viewed as the birth of the music group Grata. This also marked the beginning of what would develop into a long and deadly feud. Messi graduated from the Bocage Secondary School in 2012. In December 2014, at the age of 19, he was the lucky winner of a Christmas promotion, which was being run by regional telecommunications company Digicel. On December 24, 2014, while on shift as a steward at a local resort in St. Lucia, he was presented with the 20,000 Eastern Caribbean dollar check as his grand prize. Upon leaving school, Messi began creating Denary segment music with his group, Grappa. A lot of their earlier music featured another famous St. Lucian act, Black Boy. Denary segment, which was so named due to its community of origin, was formerly known as Lucian Kuduru. Lucian Kuduru started in the early 2000s with the likes of performers like Shep Dom, hey! amongst several others. 
and is characterized by its fast beat and repetitive and suggestive lyrics, which are sung in Creole. Creole is a French-based language with underpinnings of African dialect, which was brought to St. Lucia during the 17th and 18th centuries. The language is spoken by over 90% of St. Lucians. In the 2010s, Lucian Kuduru was officially renamed to Denery Segment. From this point, we saw the rise of many Denery Segment artists like Freezy, Serpents, and Mighty, Black Boy, Oompa, Kuya, and many others. In fact, the release of Freezy Split in the Middle track was what really skyrocketed the genre to international fame. Bro, ready? Tell them, do that for me. Split in the middle. Make the two toys jiggle. Although the song was released in 2015, it wasn't until 2017 that the song really gained traction, along with Serpents and Mighty's Bad in Bamba. Messi's music was well received by the local population and in other countries, who shared an appreciation for the local Creole or Patois dialect. Messi's music career would flourish, especially during the carnival season, and he would be booked across the Caribbean for performances. Messi was known for tunes like On Your Back, Paca Changé, Foreign Man, and Do Lime. I want to put you on your back, on your back, I want to put you on your back, on your Things seemed to be looking up for Messi, and a bright future as an entertainer and biker awaited him. He also became a prominent bike rider as a member of the motorbike group 758 Bike Life. He would participate in the country's annual Independence Day rallies and round-the-island bike rides in February, doing stunts and putting on a show for his fans. He also traveled to countries like Dominica, St. Vincent, Martinique, and more to join bike rallies and perform his hit songs. Although we couldn't confirm whether he had any children of his own, we can confirm that he had at least one niece whom he loved and cared for immensely. He never shied away from letting the world know that he loved his niece, and she can be seen in some of his social media posts. With a resounding voice in a blossoming music genre and a bike skill that he trained hard to master, no matter what injuries and scars he got, what made such a bright and rising star fall into a pit of darkness? With all the pleasantries aside, let's take a deep dive into the dark side. Remember that feud we mentioned earlier that stemmed from his days at the Bokash Secondary School? Well, it followed him into his later life. Although we couldn't confirm the cause of the initial conflict, we do know that there is one notable incident that took place at a house party in Kappa State, Grozy Lay, which Messi and Smiley attended. It's alleged that during this event, they fired some shots in order to escape an altercation with some other young men. But why did they feel the need to walk with an illegal firearm anyway? The story goes that there was a war brewing among three communities, Grosele, Moshi, and a section of Babano, where Messi was from. It's alleged that the dastardly duo of Messi and Smiley had delved deep into crime, ranging from robberies and breaking and entering, to smuggling narcotics from St. Lucia to the neighboring French territory of Martinique. These activities provided them with the financing they required to purchase as many firearms as needed. They also formed an alliance with the faction of the OTF or Only the Family gang, which broke away from the main OTF group, which was based in Jackmel. This faction, which named themselves FTO or F the Ops, was already embroiled in their own war with an opposing gang from a community called Marigo. It's also alleged that they were feuding with another gang in the community of Otsa, after killing one of the gang leaders from Otsa named Kim in Denery. Messi and Smiley embraced the FTO and accepted their counterparts' feuds as their own on behalf of Grata. The FTO faction also did the same. Here we can see screenshots of a conversation between one of the main gunmen from Grosile, whom we will call CC, and an unidentified individual. From the screenshots, it can be seen that he is riding for one of the young men who will be mentioned next, and that his life was almost shortened by an individual we will introduce later on in this video. The unknown man even gives some credit to CC for another incident, which we will cover later. Although the details are unclear, and neither could they be substantiated, there are multiple rumored encounters where the duo was apprehended for shootings and other crimes. However, we'll stick to the verified information. But let's backtrack a bit to one of the earliest instances where Messi's name became synonymous with murder. In September 2018, 
Messi's name went viral as the suspected murderer, along with Marvin Charles Eliador from the community of La Croix Babineau, after the killing of two teen cousins, 13-year-old Rohan Lewison and 19-year-old Callis Benjamin. According to eyewitnesses, Messi and Marvin were attending an event in the community, and they ended up in an argument with Callis, who they suspected was a member of a rival gang. Eyewitnesses also reported seeing Messi hand over a firearm to Marvin during the altercation, after which he unleashed a barrage of bullets, killing the two young men in the process. The young cousins hailed from the Desramio community in Moshi. These murders created a cycle of reprisal shootings. The two were apprehended but let go due to a lack of evidence and witnesses not wanting to make formal statements. After the shooting death of these young men, Messi and his colleagues were subject to several drive-by shooting attempts on their lives. Let's now fast forward to December 3, 2022, when one such attempt happened during a vigil for murder victim Molines Delis, who had been murdered at his residence in an unrelated incident on November 17, 2022. When Messi's enemies heard that he and his colleagues were possibly at the wake, they decided to use this knowledge to their advantage and conducted a drive-by which resulted in an estimated 8 to 13 innocent people sustaining gunshot injuries of varying degrees. But wait, hold on. Before we go any further, let's travel back in time to earlier that same year when a few notable events took place. On February 13, 2022, at a birthday celebration in the community of Cooley Town, multiple gunmen opened fire on the crowd, resulting in five people sustaining gunshot wounds with three succumbing to their injuries. Reports suggested that two of the main suspects in this crime were smiley and messy, but yet again, due to a lack of evidence, the investigation couldn't move forward. It's believed that some of their rivals from Marigo attended the party, and Messi and Smiley found this to be an opportune time to catch their enemies off guard. There are many more alleged altercations, but we would need a separate video just to cover them all due to all the intricate details. Earlier, we stated that Grata and FTO formed an alliance, and so did all their enemies. In this segment, we will take a look at the outcome of these alliances. The Fall of Grata as the old adage goes, all good things must come to an end, whether it be partnerships, criminal organizations, or even the most notable music groups. And here, we witness the demise of the most prominent members of Grata. The night of Saturday, August 6, 2022, seemed to be a normal night where friends congregated to have drinks and unwind from the events of the past week. News reports have it that around 10.30 p.m., Smiley, accompanied by a female companion, was walking on the roadside in a community he frequented and felt comfortable when a car pulled up and opened fire. He was hit by multiple bullets, leaving him lifeless on arrival at the OKEU hospital. He was pronounced dead the following morning at the age of 27 years. He was laid to rest on Wednesday, August 31, 2022, at the Shock Cemetery. Smiley was notably a fun-loving person to his family and his friends. Shaquille was a loving child, especially to the family. His siblings, we have nothing bad to say about Shaquille, nothing at all. I cannot find a bad word for Shaquille. I don't know how Shaquille was on the street, but at home, he was a loving person. That's all I could say. And Shaquille will be dearly missed by all of us, his friends and his family, or everybody. This murder sparked outrage in his faction, who vowed to kill whomever had committed the crime. From this point on, due to the ongoing investigations, we will refrain from stating names, but will resort to using the initials of any alleged murderers. However, it was reported that the same young man named CC, who was engaged in that earlier online exchange, committed the murder. It's alleged that after Smiley's funeral, four men were traveling in a car and stopped at Wilton's yard in Castries, when another car pulled up and opened fire on them, leaving one young man dead at the scene. His name was Eli Joseph, a 20-year-old from the community of Babineau. Another young man who was shot in his head later died. He was 27-year-old McGarrett Joseph, also known as Bolom. There are no indications that the two were blood relatives despite sharing the same last name, but they did share a circle of friends. The story goes that after the funeral, they were traveling to Wilton's yard along with Messi and the head of the FDO gang, VK, when they were attacked. Sadly, according to the information we received, they were simply collateral damage, as the main targets were Messi and his associates. 
Throughout the rest of 2022, there were other shootings and murders committed that were directly related to this war. However, we won't speak about them in this video. In another event, VK's home in Jack Mel was the subject of an attack. It's alleged that Messi, VK, and Kevin, who was VK's brother, and some others were present when gunmen attempted to take their lives. It's said that this hit was a collaboration between the Marigo OTF and Moshi and Morn Serpa neighborhoods in an effort to eradicate the heads of the FTO and Grata groups. The hit failed, and the hitmen were met with a barrage of gunfire. In their escape, a cell phone was left behind, which was collected by a member of the FTO faction. The phone held some interesting information, which included all of the messages and exchanges between the hitmen and those who hired them. The cell phone was claimed to have belonged to a young man who was part of the OTF faction in Castries. The confiscation of the cell phone led to an exchange of voice messages between Kevin and a man identified as L. Here's an expert from that exchange. He I doesn't message y'all, I just come and look for y'all and just kill your mother, come for your luggy. Do right. message my phone, you ready? Nothing not all right, ready? doggy. Nothing not all right. Ready? Nothing not all right, ready? doggy. You ready? Everything all right, mm -hmm. you. Your head hop yeah. there in your mother, come. Hop your head out in your mother, come. Your message in fella's phone. You have seen how man reach on the hill there in your mother, come. Yes, and fella's can back on the hill there. You'll go see that. You'll fella's can back on the hill there. You fella's can back on the hill there. Uh -huh. I tell you for the time that I buy any, I doesn't hide. I doesn't hide, Kevin. I does not hide. A murder is you understand in that man, doggy. I don't care. I ready to kill police too, doggy. And make them know that, doggy. And stop messaging my phone, like doggy. Stop messaging fellas' phone, like Master Kevin. Yeah, too, eh? Yeah, 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 it's too, hey, because uh, I fed up, brother. I fed okay, up all the time. I just holding it inside. I fed up of y'all now, there, for the time. The yeah, phone y'all get there? Do what you want to fit, but nobody do care. Sir, huh? I tell you, Reggie, I don't could have killed so good. That was fucking hard, doggy. Okay, you That's sir. That's a stop messaging fellas phone, doggy. Stop messaging fellas phone. Kevin. Kevin. So what you telling me there, dog? Kevin. For the air, I tell you for the time. For the time they win war, just take the From the voice notes, we can hear the young man identified as L accusing Kevin and his FTO faction of murdering Ray J. Modest. Ray J was an affiliate of the Morn Serpa faction. He was gunned down on his bike while traveling with a female passenger. In the voice notes, both sides can be heard saying how tired they are of each other and the threats being made against each other's lives. Kevin was confident in his ability to dominate the so-called war, whilst L kept taunting him for staying in his comfort zone and not being able to move around and execute attacks like his side could. Time, I'm telling you, sir. You listening again to bad man? Look independent sick coming soon, guys. Are you? Eh? Mm. If you are, I'm telling you. Mm. I outside, guys. Eh? If you are. Staying true to his word, on Wednesday, February 22, 2023, Kevin St. Hall, along with other members of his gang, were partaking in the country's annual Independence Day Round the Island activity when they stopped at a gas station on Bay Street in Soufre. It's rumored that the assailants had been monitoring them and had the hit planned out almost to the T. It was like a scene from a movie. Whilst Kevin pumped air into his bike's tire, the gunman approached and killed him execution style. The hitmen then tried to escape on a boat, but were apprehended by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force's Marine Unit. The police are to the boat back and yeah, look, they have them there, all of them. Yeah, things are down the road. So free. Kevin, by his own words, described himself as a bad man or a gangster, although he was known to be a quieter and more level-headed individual. It's alleged that the suspect or suspects involved in the murder were part of the Marigo community led by a figure who was named after one of the most recognizable cognacs in the world. Kevin St. Hull was also known as Equinox. Kekel and Bebs was buried on March 25, 2023 at the Jack Mel Cemetery. He left behind his beloved daughter, among other family and friends who adored him dearly. With another leader gunned down, the future seemed dim for the FTO slash Grata faction, but tragedy would strike again a few months later when Marvin was killed. But we'll get into the details in a bit. 
It's said that many gang leaders felt that the senseless violence between the various factions, coupled with an ongoing gang war in the south of the island, had stirred up a lot of heat around the country. There were too many moving parts and regional reinforcement had now been called in to back up the Royal St. Lucia police force. This move caused a slowdown in the different gang operations, notwithstanding the relationships that various gang leaders had brokered over the years with different communities. It's said that a call for peace was made, but Messi refused on the basis that his best friend and other close friends were already murdered. Marvin, on the other hand, along with some other rivals, embraced the move. He decided to act on faith that his rivals would stick to the peace treaty and, guided by a false sense of security, Marvin ventured into the IGY Rodney Bay Marina in Grozy Lay on June 11, 2023, accompanied by two women. It's rumored that, upon his arrival at the marina, he recognized some familiar faces, but also some others that triggered his intuition, which led him back to his vehicle to retrieve his firearm. But before he could use it or even settle in, he was executed. 39-year-old Marvin was well known to the police, and despite being on bail for firearm-related offenses at the time, the unlicensed gun was found on his body at the time of his death. This murder saw another pillar fall and let the Grata faction in a weaker state. Marvin was known to put in a lot of work to keep the gang protected at any cost, and he was a well-respected figure around the island, with ties to some of the biggest gang leaders. In retaliation for these killings, it's alleged that Messi decided that he had had enough and needed to even the scoreboard. So, on Saturday, July 1st, 2023, an attempt was made to do just that. At around 4.11 a.m., police got a report of a hail of bullets being fired in the La Clary neighborhood. On arrival, the body of 24-year-old Richard Richie Biazolet of Grosilet was found in the driver's seat. Over 20 spent shells were recovered from the scene. It's alleged that the shooters drove in an identical car to the one they opened fire on. Richie was said to have friends present, but they escaped unharmed. It's believed that the hitmen were tracking Richie's car from Rodney Bay, Rosalie, and were simply waiting for the right opportunity to execute their plan. It's thought that his death was part of the retaliation for Marvin's death and all those who had died from the Grata camp. So far, we've seen how a simple misunderstanding caused so many young men to senselessly lose their lives, and we haven't even gotten to the end. On July 7, 2023, at 10.22 p.m., a body drenched in blood was found under a tree near the Babineau Fire Station. The body was identified as Tyrell Messi Laurent. It's alleged that a short time before his body was found, a drive-by shooting targeted at Messi and his crew took place in his neighborhood. So, on that same Saturday evening, Messi and crew set out to again even the score by conducting a drive-by shooting of their own in Groselay. When they opened fire, something unexpected happened. Messi and his crew were met with return fire, which caused them to panic and eventually speed off in an effort to escape the gunfire. It's during this escape that Messi was hit in the head, and overcome by an adrenaline rush, the other occupants of the vehicle decided to abandon his body in his neighborhood for the police to find. There are two versions of how he got shot, but the more credible version implies that he got hit by friendly fire during the gun battle. The other version suggests that he was hit by bullets from gunmen who were hidden behind a nearby wall. Whichever version you choose to believe doesn't change the outcome that a rising star had fallen in a manner that was particularly shocking to those who only knew him for his music. He carried Kevin's coffin but didn't make it to Marvin's funeral. Instead, he joined Marvin at the crossroads. Though the case is fresh, there appears to be no hope of solving many of the murders that were mentioned. The Royal St. Lucia police force is plagued with two very serious problems. One being a lack of evidence in most cases, and two, a lack of witnesses who are willing to come forth for fear of losing their lives. It's easy to call on the police for justice, but in most cases, the hands of the police are tied. Street justice is usually what most people resort to. In these cases, so many young men, many of whom never lived to see the age of 30, are gone. Most, if not all, leave behind children who are now fatherless, families who mourn them and friends who will continue to miss them. The cycle is likely to continue because lives have been lost, blood has been spilt, and some surviving gang members believe that retribution is the only closure they need. 
But what do the involved parties really stand to gain from all this violence? Is it some pocket change? Jewelry? Street cred? Bikes? Are any of these materialistic items really worth a life, or in this case, lives? What is the real reason that so many young men keep murdering each other? Is it wise to destroy the world so that you can survive? Additionally, through our research, we have found that people who commit crimes or follow a certain negative lifestyle usually portray one personality to their family and loved ones and another to their victims and enemies. In fact, they are often the bane of the existence of their rivals. Nonetheless, in many instances, they're also often breadwinners for their families. And from some of the clips shown, we can see that the love shown to their loved ones was often like no other. We are in no position to speak down on any claims of who these people were to their families, but we do know that two things can be true at the same time. A person can be an angel to some and a demon to others. Let's try to be more understanding of the family's perspectives, as oftentimes they don't even know about their loved one's nefarious activities. It's truly a saddening situation. We implore the young men and women of St. Lucia to recognize that fame and glory are only for a while. It may seem tempting initially, but in the end, there are hardly any success stories who are able to safely dig themselves out of the trenches. We extend our condolences to the family and friends of all those who have lost their lives through gang and street violence. Please stop the violence.